The Lord be with you. And also with you. And good morning. Welcome. The Lord himself is present and is going to take us higher today. Rest in him and his word. We're going to begin with our opening hymn, Jesus on the Mountain Peak. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. And the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord is from Deuteronomy, chapter 34. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negev and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. And the Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. And the days of weeping and mourning for Mo Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him, as did and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there has not arisen a prophet since in, the, in Israel like Moses, whom, whom the Lord knew face to face, none like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 3. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house. If indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory be to thee, o Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him. Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, Christ. Please be seated for the hymn of the day, O wondrous type, O vision fair. i 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, from the moment that bright shining star appeared to reveal the birth of God's Son, this God in flesh has been busy filling up all creation with his new humanity, taking us higher. He's been fulfilling every holy desire of both God and man, bringing together the things that were apart and uniting them in his very person, the desire for a restored creation, the desire for evil to go away, the desire for all people to be drawn together into one, the desire for rest. This Jesus has been shaping reality for us each Sunday in Epiphany. But today, he just goes one step too far. Today, he gives us a revelation we're not sure we want. Today, he reveals something so other, so beyond, such raw existence that it fills us with holy fear. But we don't get a choice. We don't pick and choose what he's come here to do for us. And so this morning, whether we like it or not, Christ is going to show us and his disciples what he really wants for us. The disciples are like puppy dogs by this point in Luke's gospel. They are completely enamored with him. They believe in him, would follow him anywhere, would take up their cross for him, or so they say. Peter, James, and John feel honored to be the three called to come up the mountain with Jesus. He's their hero. He's fulfilling what God wants right before their eyes, day by day. And so it is with excitement and fervor they begin climbing the mountain with him. But you know how it is. By about midday, they're starting to feel it. They're up high enough now, they can see just how far they've made it. And looking down to the flat plain below, as the old body aches, they begin to think, well, they've made it high enough. I mean, they can see for miles. It's just them and Jesus. What more could they possibly need? But Jesus hasn't stopped. He continues on. He's a man on a mission. He's headed for the top. And so they better dig deep, figure out what they're made of, because this mountaintop experience isn't going to happen halfway up. It's hours later now. And finally, they reach their destination. They're up there now, standing on top of the world, the earth far below, the heavens closer than they've ever been. They look around, soak it all in for a while. Wow. Okay, Jesus. Nice. <laughs> And then the fatigue sets in. The excitement calms down. They're tired. And Jesus has started to pray. Well, <laughs> they know they should pray too. So one by one, they find a place to kneel down and begin to pray. Until they fall asleep. Oh, come on. You've had that happen too, so have I. Your dog tired, you feel safe. The one who's always been there for you is listening, and, well, you fall asleep. It's brutal, though, isn't it? This should be the high moment in our day. I mean, we're, talk we're not talking to one of our fellow sinners down here, you know, who has very little power to change anything. No. In prayer, we're talking to our all-powerful creator, the one at the top. But suddenly, somehow, well, we run out of time and energy. <laughs> but there's Jesus praying. And we're sleeping. There's Jesus, faithful, and we're lazy and unfaithful. Even when we're the inner circle, even on the top of the mountain. Oh, we want to be so close but we're always ready to say, that's enough. We want to be in, but we're always ready to, to lean back. We want to be included, but we're always ready to give up on where else God might be taking us. 
because we think we've come far enough. Well, are we ever in for a surprise? As Jesus is praying, the appearance of his face changes and his clothes begin to shine. A piercing, dazzling white. It's so bright, it wakes the disciples up from their heavy sleep. He's glowing like he's the sun. Basking there in his glory are two saints long since taken to glory, Moses and Elijah. And they're talking to him, talking to their God in human flesh, here to fulfill every word they ever spoke, talking to the one they spoke to long ago on God's holy mountain. But here he is now in the flesh, shining, revealing his true self to his apostles, nothing hidden. Peter, James, and John lean in. They want to hear. What are they talking about? His departure, the one he's about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Death on the cross. Resurrection from the dead. Ascension into heaven. They're talking about it. That's what old Moses and Elijah are interested in up there in glory. Imagine. They're interested in Christ. And his fulfillment of all things. His plan to give his shining glory to all humanity. Did you hear that? But the chat's done. Moses and Elijah are headed off. No! Wait! Peter says, don't go. Master, don't let them go. Let's all stay. I'll make tents. We can just stay here on the mountain for days. I don't think it's possible to describe how foolish this really is. When I was writing the sermon, I just kept get, like being overcome by how utterly ridiculous it is that Peter actually said this. Think about it. They're on the top of a mountain. Jesus starts shining like the sun. Moses and Elijah suddenly appear. Everyone is focusing in, building up for this epic departure that will fulfill all things. And Peter wants to stay. Can you even think of something more self-focused? Could there ever be even a more contrasted, headed in the opposite, slow on the uptake thing to want, to think, and to say? But this is the way we are. Yeah. We. I think every one of us would have said the same thing, which is why I just couldn't believe how hard the Lord had nailed me right between the eyes. We don't understand our desires. We don't reflect much on why we have them, don't question them. We believe we've made them up, that our desires are unique and special to us, something to trust in and follow. But this is a total lie. They've deceived us. Your desires are not unique to you. They're not novel, not exceptional. They are predictable, the same as everyone else's, because these selfish desires are what the Lord calls sin. When we follow our hearts, trust in our own desires, we are very predictably wanting what everyone else wants. This is our sinful human nature. It is the very reason Jesus must make his departure. He is the sacrifice, the scape deal to de scapegoat that's going to deal with our selfish desires. He is the peace, the survival, the end of selfishness so that we might live. You want to stay, Peter? You want to rest here? Yes, well, I promise you rest. But there's something more I want you to have. Something more I've been working to give you. Something you would never ask for, could never have known about, that I want to share with you. Not just my rest, but my glory. God in man made manifest the fulfillment for which I've made you. I want you to shine like me. 
Beloved, this is what Christ wants. His desire, despite Peter, despite me, despite you, is that we all might share in his eternal glory, shine with him in a world without end. And if you don't know what to say about that, if you're just sitting there, struggling to fathom the height of what God is actually offering you, don't be surprised, <laughs> because that's exactly what happened to Peter. All his foolish talk suddenly gets interrupted in a way that nearly makes him faint. All at once, without warning, darkness descends on the top of the mountain. An impenetrable cloud falls around them, blocking out all they can see, and things go from dazzling white to deepest black, fully revealed to fully hidden. This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Don't listen to the desires of your heart. Listen to him. Don't listen to the preaching of the world. Listen to him. Don't rely on what your eyes see. Listen to him. He is my son. He shares my nature. He is my chosen one. He is the only way to me. This is my greatest gift. Listen to him. He speaks the very best thing that you could ever hear. Yes, certainly he is beautiful. Yes, he is truthful. Yes, he is gentle. Yes, he is merciful. He is all these things and more. And I want him to give them to you. Share them with you. Make you shine like him. Don't be afraid. Just listen. Now as the sound of the voice fades and the darkness lifts and there's Jesus standing there all alone looking at the disciples on the ground, they know what it means. But at the very same time, they realize they don't know all that it means. And they are afraid. They can't quite look at him the same way again because now they know. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, revolt against being satisfied with the things of this life. Now that you know what God wants to freely give you, make you, share with you, revolt against your petty selfish desires and set your heart on what he wants to give you. Revolt against being lost in human uncertainty and be found in this shining one, named by him and taken beyond to a new existence that he embodies here right before our very eyes. He has to do it. He has to show these three disciples what awaits them in glory. Because on that Jerusalem road ahead, it will be completely hidden. Hidden under rejection, mockery, torture, and brutal death. And you need to see this too, dear Christian. Because the road that lies ahead for you is the same. It is hidden now. What will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. We're headed into Lent. And we're walking this entire life with Christ through a world that is increasingly dark. So he shows you here ahead of time. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid one bit. Not of the world, not of the devil, not of those selfish inner desires. They die in Christ. He has to do it. This is his glory, by the way. He reveals and he hides. And in just a moment, under the bread of the altar, Jesus is going to hide the very same body that shone like the sun. No, you won't see it. You're supposed to listen, hear him, receive him, trust him. This is my body given for you. This is my chosen way 
to give you my eternal glory. It's hidden, but it's for you to keep you hidden in me until the Father chooses to reveal you. He reveals, and he hides, and he reveals. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And this is, of course, the very moment that I will encourage you that if you have not had the supper in any amount of time to make an appointment or find yourself coming here this Ash Wednesday, we also have a service with the supper, and it's perhaps the perfect opportunity to draw near to the Lord once more. Let us together then, in faith, confess this truth with the apostles and the prophets using the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he, and he will come, come again, again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers, we'll continue to pray for Joan Duick and her family at the loss of her brother Andrew a number of weeks ago now. But we'll also pray for Karen Baumbach, who uh, has, is recovering from her surgery and hoping to be home from hospital one day soon. We'll ask the Lord to attend to these things and all those we've been naming in recent weeks. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in prayer, your son Jesus revealed his glory to Peter, James, and John. Grant that we also gathered in prayer would see him by faith and receive from him the redemption he has accomplished for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, your Son shines in resurrected light. Illuminate your church with his own brightness, that she would tell the world of his mighty deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as you appointed Moses of old to lead your people, so you sent your Son Jesus to to find and lead your church. Sustain us from age to age and grant us teachers of righteousness to guide us in the days to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your Son cares faithfully for his holy church, grant us a sure confidence in him and give us faithful hearts to serve him according to the callings that he has given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone establish authority on earth. Bless those entrusted with this responsibility, both here and abroad, that they would serve with integrity and honor 
and for the well-being of all. Grant that all division, conflict, and strife in our country and throughout the world would give way to unity, peace, and quietness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all comfort, as we follow the way of your apostles into your presence, you join our prayers to the ceaseless petitions of your dear Son. Hear us for the sake of the troubled, the sick, and the dying, especially Karen, Tim, Lori Ann, Phyllis, Matilda, the Duick family in their grief, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you gave your Son as the final sacrifice for sin. As he faithfully prepares his own body and blood for us Christians to eat and drink, grant us confidence to draw near to him and receive him worthily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on the Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end that we may die a blessed death, believing in your beloved Son with whom you are well pleased. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer.
May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be yours and your families now and always. Bless you. Um, a couple of announcements here. You don't need to register to come to in-person services anymore, so just come. Um, that's true also for the Creation Ministries uh, presentation on the 26th of, of March there. It's a Saturday at 1.30. So to any of these things, you just, just come if you want. We would let you know if that changes, uh, so you stand by for that. This Wednesday, we enter into the 40 days of Lent, Ash Wednesday. We're going to have a pancake supper at 6 o'clock here at the church, followed by at 6.45, the burning of the last year's palms from Palm Sunday, uh, followed by, of course, the imposition of ashes and the Ash Wednesday service with Holy Communion at 7. So 6, 6.45 and 7. Uh, come on out for that and enter into this uh, Lenten walk with your Lord towards his cross this year. Uh, speaking of Lent, our theme this year is called Wounds That Touch You. And it's going to be actually during the Sunday service of the Word time, instead of Wednesday afternoons. It'll actually bump the Sunday morning readings to the Wednesday evening. So you still get both. But we're going we're gonna, to uh, bring that um, Lenten theme into the Sunday morning routine. So wounds that touch you, things like the chains and the thorns and the nails, uh, we're actually going to hold these in our hands and we're going to have uh, the service reflect on how the Lord is using these things and, uh, and his wounds to bring healing and, and to bring faith and to, all, and to free us, of course, from all the things that ail us. So uh, don't, you don't want to miss it. Find yourself uh, where you need to be with that. Now, that brings me to the question. What kind of soup would you like to bring on those Wednesday Vespers services, all the ones following Ash Wednesday, we're going to have soup suppers uh, starting at 6 o'clock and the Vespers service at 7 o'clock. Now, uh, you might think you got the soup that it takes to satisfy. And so, uh, by all means, uh, let Kevin know if you'd like to provide soup. We're looking for two for each of the, the nights, uh, the soup, soup supper nights. And uh, it's, it's starting to fill up, so you got to get your... if you. You know, you got to get yours in there uh, before it's too late there. So um, just, just contact Kevin with, with that, and he will let you know what, what date, or you can let him know what date works for you on that. Also, young adults, you're meeting this Friday, March the 4th at 7 for games night. Rumor is there's pizza too. So uh, if you consider yourself a young adult, come out. Don't be shy and, and have some fun and some devotions with those that are, of course, uh, Christians pilgriming through this world like you. Uh, all, VBS is on July now. We got this new set of dates. We're in person. So the mark that Mark can say the date for July 4th to 8th. Uh, if you'd like to be a participant in that, whether it's during that actual week or even in the lead up, we are looking for volunteers. So you can sign up on the congregational email. Just say, yes, I'd like to volunteer there. Or you could contact Trixie or myself uh, and let us know, yeah, I want to be involved. I want to be involved. Also, uh, we have Lutheran Foundation is hosting a seminar, a webinar. It's, it's virtual. It's at seven o'clock on March the 14th. And uh, it's going to go, he's going to, Alan Schallenberg is going to take us through um, Christian estate planning and funeral planning. So if that's something, he's offering that to our congregation. If you'd like to, to be a part of that, you think that that's something you'd be interested in, please go and register uh, to learn more. There's, there's more details there in, in the announcements in the congregational email. You can check out all the details of what that entails. Uh, and then finally, I did mention that Creation Ministries is on the 26th of March. Um, come, bring a friend, and be equipped for that conversation and, and uh, how to, to understand, think, and share these matters of the creation of the world uh, and the creation of heaven and earth with your friends. So uh, I think that's all my announcements. If that wasn't enough, well, good. Uh, God bless you and may you have um, clarity and, and pause and, and meditation as you enter into uh, the 40-day fast with the Lord this Wednesday. God be with you. We'll pray together in this time. See you soon.